Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to Getting Ahead Night here at Bonner and Prendy. Uh, my name is Mr. Patrick Walsh. I'm the Director of Admissions here at Bonner and Prendy going into my fifth full school year uh, with the Admissions Office. Uh, if I count the years that I worked in admissions and directed theater and went to school here, I'll be going into the tenth year of my life on this campus. So very familiar with uh, the community, the school, uh, and, and what we do here at Bonner and Prendy and the Bonner and Prendy experience overall. So welcome to those of you who are joining us in person tonight, to those of you who are watching uh, from home. I know I had a lot of families email me and say, oh, I wish I could go, it's our back to school night, which I think it's really funny that like we're holding like a get ready for high school night on the back to school night for eighth grade. But the reality is um, over the last five years, as I've witnessed, the admissions process changed immensely. It's gone from, you know, you, you, know, you go where your parish tells you to, or that was a longer time ago, or filling out your application, paying a hundred dollars, off you go to high school it's a lot more specific now and it really is about the student finding their fit the right school for them um, and it's really elevated it's become like a junior version uh, of the college process so we hold this night um, really for you it's not so much about us or Bonner and Prendy I think anyone looking at any schools benefits from this event so it's less about uh, who we are and, and you know what we do and that can all be shared in many open houses and upcoming events and of course I'll highlight some of the great things uh, but really, our focus tonight is, is you getting ready for your uh, son or daughter's high school application process and selecting that high school. So that's really our focus tonight. Um, I have uh, our president, Dr. John Cook, who's going to do our welcome before I sort of dive into our agenda. And then I'll be going over everything we're covering tonight. Uh, the presentation will be by myself and then also Mrs. Joanne Dolan, who is my also sidekick, awesome sidekick in admissions, who's joining us from the Zoom tonight in the comfort of her air-conditioned house. Uh, so she's there. Uh, but for now, I'll have Dr. Cook come up and just give us an introduction and welcome. Thank you, Mr. Walsh. Uh, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Bonner Prendy. As uh, Mr. Walsh mentioned, my name is uh, Dr. Cook, and I serve as the president here at Bonner Prendy. I'm actually going into my sixth year uh, here at the school. Um, and uh, I'm going to tell you real quick, uh, do we have any alumni in the office or maybe online? All right, well, welcome home. I'm sure the school has changed a lot uh, since uh, you were here, a student here. Uh, but I just want to highlight some of the things that we've done uh, structurally at the school and prog programmatically as well to benefit our students. And uh, also a special welcome to our students. Uh, as Mr. Walsh said, it's crazy that uh, we're just starting our first week of school and we're already talking about next year. But my job as president here at Bonner Prentice is to get you prepared, uh, eighth graders, when you become freshmen for that next step after Bonner Prentice. Uh, so we have done a lot of intentional things here at the school to do that. Uh, first and foremost is, you know, before I came to Bonner Prenti, I worked at Drexel University in higher education for 15 years. And I was part of the orientation process and admissions process for students at Drexel. And Drexel is a pretty competitive school. The year that I left there in 2015, there was 30,000 applications for 3,000 spots. That's pretty competitive. Uh, so they obviously look for the smart students. But in addition to that, they're looking for well-rounded students. They're looking for students that are involved. So we're very intentional in helping students build that resume here at the school uh, to help them get involved and do different activities. So one thing we did, uh, which is kind of unique, is we, we eliminated all uh, types of uh, pay-to-play fees. When you pay tuition here at Bonner Prenti, that includes everything for your students to really get involved here and participate in different sports and activities. Uh, so with that, we saw a huge spike in engagement and involvement with our students, which really contributes to the, to the campus life here but also helps those students build those re that resume so they can show colleges and universities after they leave Bonner Prenti that, hey, I could be a good student in the classroom, but I can also do that while time managing and being a leader and uh, working with others through activities and uh, athletics. So number one, we broke down all financial barriers to create no excuse on why a student should not get involved here at Bonner Prenti. We really push our students to do that. We drove on the campus tonight, you saw a result of that, how lively this campus is. You know, we had a football game uh, uh, out on the turf field here. We have a volleyball game down in the gymnasium. The soccer girls soccer team just pulled in from a game 
uh, boys soccer was out there. We have a host of different activities going on constantly here at Bonner Prendy. Uh, with that, we're very intentional on putting money back into the building too. And uh, in, uh, like the auditorium right here that we redid uh, about four years ago in uh, you know, creating a, a space where you know, we, we show that we care about our students and uh, increase those educational environments. Uh, just uh, this past year, uh, we, you know, safety and security is one important thing here. And you can saw when you walked in, there's a glass box out there and they're gonna have doors after tomorrow where our guests are gonna have to be kind of stay in that box until somebody lets them into the building and they're gonna need to check in where before people you used to get checked in, but it was very open and uh, not very secure in that area. But after tomorrow, it'll be very secure in getting in here. Uh, we spent uh, about $30,000 over the summer too uh, to increase the amount of cameras throughout the building. And we also created, uh, even put more money into the infrastructure to put more security cameras uh, on the perimeter of the building as well, so because safety and security is a big part of, uh, you know, obviously we want our students to be safe and secure. Um, traditions too, there's a lot of different things here that we uh, incorporate through traditions. You know, at one time we were a boys school and a girls school, and we're very intentional in combining the two traditions of Bonner and Prendy. You can see the school colors. We kept the, the girls color garnet and the green for the boys. We kept the two mascots. And we actually have our theology classes are still separate as well as our homerooms to really contribute to uh, the, the, the traditions that we had at Bonner and Prendy at one time. I could go on and on, but I know Mr. Walsh is gonna talk a little bit more about uh, more specifics. I just wanna talk about obviously COVID and uh, the, the world that we live in now. Uh, last year, we worked in a hybrid model and we got through the whole year. We only had to close down uh, the whole school for three days throughout the whole year, uh, which was uh, pretty good considering the amount of students we had coming in and out of the building. Uh, during the hybrid model, we had half the school at home virtually and then half the school here in person every day, just flip-flopped. But I'm happy to say that all our students are back in the building now. Um, we opened up with uh, the strongest enrollment we've had in five years. We have 850 students currently uh, in the building right now, which is uh, way more than we thought we were going to, which is great uh, because, uh, you know, we're happy to have everybody here and uh, kick off the year. And hopefully by the end of the year, we won't be wearing masks and we can put the lunch tables back into the lunch cafeteria downstairs. But right now, they're just sitting in desks. But everything else is kind of uh, sort of back to normal, minus the mask in the cafeteria. Uh, but once again, welcome to Bonner Prandy. Enjoy your night. Uh, ask as many questions as you can and look forward to seeing you possibly next year. Thank you. Take care. Okay, and then before I begin, I am going to ask Mrs. Dolan. I have my uh, participants hidden here because I don't want everyone on the screen, but I want to give you the chance to be seen and heard by everyone. So let me see if I continue as well. Are you able to give us a hello, Ms. Dolan? Yes. Can you hear me? We got you. Perfect. Yeah. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Like Mr. Walsh had said, this is sort of like a mini version of the college application process. I have had that experience three times thus far with my uh, three children. And um, the one word that I could say to describe high school application now with all my experience um, in my seven years working at Bonner and Prendy and with the college application process, it's very overwhelming, um, but we are here for you um, to help your journey to Bonner and Prendy be less overwhelming. So welcome, and I'm so thrilled that you joined us this evening. I think that after tonight's presentation, Hopefully you will be able to relax and know that we are here for you. Our team um, is here to answer any questions that you have and help you along the way on your journey to Bonner and Prendy. So welcome. And I look forward to uh, sharing some information with you later on this evening. Great, thank you so much. I'll throw it back to you when it's time for our uh, financial aid topic. So we'll be covering three things tonight. I'll dive into what they are in just one second. Uh, just a welcome from myself. So again, my name's Mr. Patrick Walsh. I thought what was funny today was I saw one of our new freshmen in the hallway and he saw me and he went, hello, Patrick Walsh. 
And I was like taking it back. I was like, oh, hello. And he's like, I'm so sorry. That's I said, whenever you email my mom, that's what I see. So I just got used to calling you Patrick Walsh. I was like, that's fine. I said, it's okay, Elijah. You can call me Patrick Walsh. But um, happy to be here again. We're, in, we're our team of ad admissions representatives are all alumni of this school. And as you can see, all graduates from different times. But we all care about this school immensely. We all truly believe in the Bonner and Prenny experience because we know it worked for us. We've seen it work for so many uh, as well. This journey that you're about to go on is really rewarding for you, but Mrs. Dolan and myself love this also because we get to see you over four years um, really grow and find what interests you. Um, and for example, I remember specifically last year when we held this event, um, right here to my left was a family of two cousins who were applying eighth graders, Layla and Deontay. And then somewhere around like five rows back here was another one of our uh, eighth grade applicants, uh, Romaine Campbell. And um, all great students, great young adults. And today is our new getting ahead night. And uh, before we started, I popped into the gym to check on the volleyball game. And I saw Layla playing volleyball. I saw Deontay sitting there with his family cheering her on. I left the gym, came down the hallway, and Romaine was carrying his football pads from his game today. I shook my hand and said, hey, Mr. Walsh, how are you? And I was like, that is... That's what, that's what we do this for. Like, that is what our admissions team exists for because we want to get you from where you are in the seats now to in these halls as a part of our community that's contributing to the involvement, to the atmosphere, to the family that we have, and we're going to get you there. And we see it happen. I saw it happen for Layla. I saw it happen for Romaine. I see it happen for all of our students. Uh, and I know it will happen for your student when they get here and they get involved as well. <clears throat> so Dr. Cook had sort of mentioned this, but just a brief History, if you aren't familiar, or at least know where we are in the timeline of Bonner and Prendy as a campus. Uh, the first building built on our campus is that large building you passed, which used to be Archbishop Prendergast High School for Girls. And then the building we are in today is Monsignor Bonner High School for Boys, or as it was titled, uh, until 2012. So in 2006, our two schools merged their administration. So even though that was an entirely single-gender girls' school next door, and this was all male in this setting, we had one administration. So by the time I graduated in 2012, I was in this single gendered setting in Bonner, although half of my elective classes were next door in a co-ed setting with Prendy, and I had the same principal here as I did there and vice versa. So we were pretty much unofficially merged at the time prior to our actual merging into this building. So we merged into this building in the 2012-2013 school year. So this year's seniors will be the 10th class to graduate from our merged school. So essentially, we're now looking 10 years past that moment where we are now, as Dr. Cook said, our enrollment's in a really great position. We're, we're getting great students and families to enroll and get involved with us. And we're in a really comfortable place right now as a school. Um, I say compared to other schools, we're a happy medium. We're not the largest school in the Archdiocese. We're not the smallest in Delco. We sort of always serve the purpose of that in between. And we really do pride ourselves on that because that gives us the chance to really offer an individualized experience for your student where it's tough to go a day where I don't see Layla or Deontay or Romaine because of how these halls work, because of our size, we see everybody at least once a day. So just a couple numbers and infographics as we go. So this year we welcomed 232 freshmen into our class of 2025 um, from over 55 different grade schools in the region. Uh, this making us now the third largest school in the Archdiocese. This is the second year in a row uh, we have more than 230 freshmen come in. So again, we've had very strong uh, recruitment seasons, and that's honestly more, even more of a reason for you to start getting ahead because you know we're going to get a lot of applications as we normally do. We're going to get around 500, 600 applications each year. Um, but if you're one of those first 100 applicants, uh, we can move through this process rather quickly. And believe it or not, I do have families calling this week asking if they can apply to get in for this current school year. And there's very little I can do to help them in terms of getting the roster the way they'd like it, getting their transportation set up in time, uh, and so on and so forth. So right now is a little too late, right? So that's why we have Getting Ahead. The reason we started this event two years ago is because the Archdiocese changed the system uh, through which they do applications. And we thought it'd be beneficial to teach everyone that new system because it was all online now, it was all digital, there was no paper application anymore. It, you create an account. Uh, so on and so forth. So we said it would be beneficial to host this event each year so that you pretty much have the opportunity to learn this information. So we decided to offer it every year since then because people have found it beneficial. Um, 35 clubs and student organizations were offered, seven different colleges through which we've partnered with over the years. Right now we have three active partnerships for this current semester. So they change each semester and year, but right now we have uh, Newman College or Newman University, excuse me, teaching a public speaking class in here during our school periods for our students. 
Uh, we have Rosemont coming in over the weekend and teaching an art college course down in our art studio. And then we also partner a dual enrollment with Delaware County Community College, uh, who presently their closest location is in Barclay Center across the trolley tracks here in Upper Darby. But their new close location will be right next door to us uh, in this building. So they have purchased the Prendergast building. They'll be moving in. Um, the details on that are still to come out, but it's really not going to impact our campus in any way. The back of the building becomes their front. It's going to be a great partnership we have where our students can actually go next door and take these classes during their day, knock out college gen eds right here for a couple hundred dollars, save money on college credits, obtain them early, right on the same campus, the same path that I took from the start of the year to the end of the year. Thank you. Uh, so just some numbers in terms of where we're going, right? There's an investment here you're making. You're choosing a high school because you want that high school to also help your student get ready for what is next. So uh, just a few things on that. Since we've taken over as an admissions team in 2017, uh, you know, we're going to surpass $100 million in college scholarships since 2017, uh, almost 1,500 acceptances to different colleges and universities, 99% um, placement as well. Uh, and that doesn't just mean 99% go to college. It means we're placing where you're going, whether it be college. You see the breakdown here from a recent class, whether it be college, trade school, military. I know my cousin who graduated last year, she knew college wasn't her best option, but she really enjoyed the med careers program she did through our school at Delaware County Community or at the uh, Memorial Hospital. So she graduated from here and within a month had a job as a uh, medical technician assistant. So she's working now and she knew that was her path and we made sure we got her on that path. So that was a viable option for her uh, come the time of her graduation. Uh, athletics wise, we have currently 41 student athletes who are continuing at a collegiate level at the present moment. So that's not 41 over the past few years. Like right now, freshmen through seniors in college, we have 41 competing, a range of sports from rowing to basketball to soccer. It's a mix of everyone. Um, five MVPs of the Philadelphia Catholic League. Again, nice to mention that we've had students who really have excelled in their sports um, and been honored in like the Delco Times and, and other ways as the MVP. And then 20 teams competing across all the seasons. Um, and it's actually more than 20. So it's 20 different sports or teams. But once you start breaking it down, for example, uh, football has a freshman team, a JV team, and a varsity team. So that number of teams actually grows. But there's 20 specific sports teams that are competing while they're here with us. And then as it comes down to alumni, you know, alumni have always been a strong support of us. We raise $2 million in tuition assistance each year from our alums who give back to us. So we rely heavily on our alums, and the alums believe strongly in what we do here at Bonner Apprendi. They want to make it affordable and a good option for you. So we appreciate our alumni, and we have a large stretch of them all throughout the world, and of course all throughout Delco. So the question is, how do we get ahead? And the answer is, by doing this now, you are ahead. Like you, you are here. Step one is showing up, and you are ahead. By having the interest of getting ahead, you you are ahead. Trust us. Um, it means a lot to see a parent know now. I want to get this situated. I'm thinking about high school now. Yes, I just signed the eighth grade syllabus a week ago, but it's time to start thinking about high school. That's a good mindset to have because the year does go by quickly. When you think about what happened in March 2020, all of those parents who had already picked a high school right around the time COVID pretty much shut down our world, um, they were relieved because they were like, okay, good, at least we got to visit the school, we know the school. Um, but there were a lot of families who were caught not yet visiting, uh, haven't gotten the chance to see schools, compare schools, um, really get their kids or students to see the actual building. Um, so we say in this sort of unknown time where you know we're seeing what's next, you know, as we hope to get closer to the light at the end of this tunnel, you know, the reality is when you have the opportunity to get to the school and see it, you want to take that opportunity because the sooner you can get it done, the more security you have, the more you can enjoy eighth grade's year on the rest of the school year without worrying about it too much. So the way that I sort of visualize where we are right now as eighth grade parents is when you're at a theme park and there's the really tall roller coaster and you're looking up at the really tall roller coaster and you just hear it zip by and you just hear the screams go by in the air. Like the, ah! It goes by and you're like, I don't want to go on that. I know that's how I feel. I'm like, some rides I'm okay, but the, the big scary ones, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm good. So that's where we are right now. We're looking up at this big roller coaster right now thinking, really? Like, we're here already? Like, the, the, I have to go on this ride? And my goal with tonight, our goal throughout the year, is to make it seem more like this, which is a little more friendly of a ride. Um, we're not sending you on the roller coaster alone, all right? It's going to be more like a merry-go-round. I'll be right here with you, holding you on the little ceramic pony that you want to go on. Okay, so that's what we're hoping to do, is to break this down and make it a little less intimidating and say, let's just show you how this process works so that you know exactly what you need to be doing to get ready for this and be on schedule um, with your application.
So in the folder at check-in, if you did not get a folder when you checked in, uh, you can grab one on your way out. For our virtual friends, we're going to email out the recording of this, and I will also be including um, a PDF of this. But in your folder is what we made last year is essentially our admissions to-do list. And what I wanted to do was just break it down into five simple steps. So on the inside of this, it's pretty much you open it up. It's just what the five big admission steps are. Uh, there can be other steps, right? If you choose to apply for a scholarship, there's a step there. If you choose to take a scholarship exam, there's a step there. But in terms of breaking it down to its basic five steps that you know you need to take, it's visiting the school, uh, applying, supplying the records, and then applying for financial aid. And I tell everyone to always apply for financial aid regardless of whether or not they think they will qualify or not because the number of applications we receive can often enable us to receive more funding. And if we receive more funding, it doesn't mean it's gonna be limited. It could go to anyone who may have applied or qualified. So we always tell people, regardless of your situation, especially if things change mid-year that you didn't expect to change, it's easier to go in and make a change to a financial aid application than it is to start one all over from scratch and be in the back of the queue because of the date you completed it. So I always say it's worth it to complete that financial aid application up front. Uh, and then the fifth step, which is the yay step, the celebrate step, that we did it, we got in, let's register and let's pick our high school moment. So that's the gr a great step as well. So hopefully this little checklist kind of serves as that visualization for you again just our attempt at breaking it down making it a little more a little more um, palatable for parents to sort of look at the process and say okay here's what I got to do and you can check it off as you go you can put it up on the fridge so you have it keep it in that folder whatever you need to do to kind of keep it in front of you is nice in terms of when to do these things so really Christmas is sort of the the buzzer of the fourth quarter here so again we have families coming all through the school year I'm, I'm accepting people in January February March and on um, but really, we always say Christmas is a great time to be situated by because that means if you're situated by Christmas, if you've done everything on the steps by the end of December, then by the end of January, you should be accepted. You should know your financial aid. You should know what it's going to cost to go here. And you can register and you have the last six months of eighth grade to relax, enjoy, and not worry about picking a high school. Um, so pretty much I break it down to sort of this month-by-month -month breakdown. So, you know, September's a great time to get that application in, right? We're going to ask for records. I'll talk more about that in a bit. Obviously, there are no eighth grade records yet, right? We haven't got report cards. We just started. So we don't expect eighth grade records yet. We'll take seventh grade ones. Again, I'll talk more about that in a bit. Um, but applying for financial aid opens in October, so that's a great time to do that. Our open houses are in fall, or in the fall, so October and November, so a great time to get your visit done. Uh, same thing with December. January is typically when we open registration. Um, so if you're a priority family, more on that coming up, you'll be able to get your acceptance first. You'll be able to register by January. But what I will reveal is that we've decided this year we're going to let families register in December as well. So I'm adding this little graphic there. So you could, as soon as December, have a decision made, be registered as a school, and be situated. So that is possible, just so you have that in mind. <clears throat> so what I'll be covering tonight, the first thing, and I'll do this, is the school admin portal, which is where you do your application. And then financial aid, Mrs. Dolan will talk about that. And then the last thing I'll do is I'll announce our fall admissions event dates. Uh, and get them in front of you and just talk through what we're looking at in terms of events and recruitment um, opportunities this fall. So the first thing is school admin. So school admin is where we are going, where we house all of our applications. It's a system used across the board by the archdiocese. Whether you applied here or Archbishop Ryan or all the way out at Commonwealth Egan, you're using school admin. Okay, so we're all going to be able or need to be able to use school admin and be familiar with. Uh, how to navigate through school admin, regardless of where we may rank on your students list or what your current thoughts are on Bonner and Prendy in terms of an opportunity for your student. We always hope we're number one, but we know there's a lot of great schools out there. And part of my job is admitting that we're not the right fit for everyone. I don't want to bring people in here where this isn't the right fit. I want 230 students who believe this is the school for them. I just don't want 230 students. So part of our job is admitting that there are other schools that are going to serve students in other ways. So as you find that school, it's important to know that school admin is going to be relevant for all applicants, no matter where you're applying. And other private schools are beginning to utilize it as well. So the first thing I'll say is I'm going to share a lot of information. You're encouraged to take notes in any way, take a picture of the screen. Again, we'll share out the PowerPoint, we'll share out the video, so you can go through this anytime you'd like to. Um, but a safety net's going to be that 99% of the time, the answer's always under admissions on our website. Okay, we, we have ownership of our site. We can update the information as often as we'd like to. So, you know, as of today, the admission steps for next year are all updated. The upcoming events are all updated. Affording BMP with the tuition information, it's all updated. So it's all there for you to access it. So always give the admissions pages a look 
um, anytime you're unsure about something or would like to learn a little bit more info on something as well. So you'll see two options when you go under admissions anytime you're looking for an event, and we're keeping the format this year, which is every event's going to have a way to visit in person and a way to visit virtually. Um, just as we're still dealing with the pandemic, um, there are families who would benefit from it or prefer virtual visits, so we're going to keep doing what we're doing now, where I have families seeing the same presentation from home as you are right now in the auditorium. So um, if that's more convenient for you, if you've got soccer practice that bleeds into uh, dance recital that bleeds into something else and you've got to catch us on the in-between while you're in the van, it'll work out because we'll have things virtually, we'll store them online, we'll make it available for you uh, on demand. So when you click apply today, so pretty much when I want to apply and you go to apply today or you click, click apply anywhere on our website, you'll be taken to the apply today page where it pretty much says are you ready to be, hashtag BP bound, and what you'll be looking for is this fun little graphic drawn by one of our students of a friar and a panda, our two school mascots, holding a little banner that says apply today. And that'll take you to this school admin portal where you're going to be applying. So again, to access all this, it's just going through our website, under admissions, clicking apply today, um, or really upcoming events, admission step, they all link back to the apply button. So you'll be taken to something that looks similar to this. Um, it's the school admin system, and you're pretty much going to be asked to sign in or create an account. So just like we do with all things in life, whether we are going on Facebook or Yahoo email or we're signing into our Amazon Prime or Twitter or in my case, fantasy football, no matter what you're doing, we all have accounts and logins and passwords, and you're going to need a login for school admin. Now, whenever I go through this every year, my example is Peter Parker. So I'm my fake name today, I'm essentially Spider-Man while I do these applications with you. Uh, but, you know, you'll want to keep this all safe uh, nearby, and you will need to do a different application for any archdiocesan school you apply to because other schools are going to ask for other things. So you will have those different applications and logins, so just be prepared for that. You may need to make a couple, and you'll be m managing a few at a time. There is no one hub where I can apply to three different schools at the same time. So once you've created your account, and again, you're going to want to save your password, keep it handy. At any point, I can reset it, relook it up for you, whatever you need. So we have that access if you're logged out or you need an authentication code all of a sudden and you don't know where that is. We have that. We can get it to you anytime. We can be sort of your 24-7 support with School Admin. You don't have to go to School Admin for anything. You can come straight to us. Um, and you'll pretty much create a little landing page for your student as you're applying. And if you had a student come through here as recent as two, three years ago, this isn't what it looked like then. So it is still different. Um, so it's important to learn pretty much what's changed in terms of the process. So it's all digital now. You'll be completing it all through this platform. And you'll choose begin the admissions process. So that's where you're going to want to pretty much do everything, right? That makes sense. There's an application you'll be completing, of course, and you see the five sections here are the applicant information, uh, the household information, the sibling information, and the last two steps are pretty much layups, the signature, which is an electronic typing of your name, and then review to make sure everything you've entered is correct. So it's pretty standard information you're going to be expected to um, submit about a student's profile. It's all there. You know, it has the areas that are required, so if you don't do it and you hit submit, it'll send you back and say, oh, you didn't do a zip code, you didn't choose the school they're coming from, um, so on and so forth. But it, it's a really intuitive, user-friendly system that I think you'll be able to use. If you have issues, we can help you out in any way. We can complete it with you over the phone. We can bring you in and walk you through it. Um, but I do encourage you to sit down and try because it should be uh, fairly user-friendly as you create this application. So as Peter Parker, the parent, my application today is for um, Miles from Spider-Verse. So that's who you'll see today is my fake student. Um, and actually, one of the fun things is, is last year when I sent out our Christmas postcards to our applicants, this one came back in January all bent up. And I'm like, oh, one came back. And that's because we sent it to Spider-Man 100 Spider Lane, Brooklyn, New York. So we never pulled the fake one out of the system last year. So this is my fun little keepsake that reminds me of getting a head night. So when you complete your application and it's all done, you are done a part of the process, but it's not just that. It's not just the application. Um, you have what's called a parent portal. So you see here, I just submitted it. I got a thank you message that says back to the parent portal. The parent portal is what's going to kind of keep you on pace for what needs to be done still. Uh, in the past, it was this right here, which was a yellow folder. So when you would apply, we'd get an email, we'd print your application, we'd stuff it in this folder, and it would sit there until we received your records. And a lot of times what was happening, not just at our school, but at all schools, 
is people would call and say, did you get the records yet? And there was no way of checking in real time as a parent if something's been received or if my checklist is done. Are they waiting on me? Am I waiting on them? And that's what School Admin allows us to do. It allows us to say that, you know, no more folder. It's now all online for us to manage. So you will have a checklist. See this little green progress bar that sort of fills up as you go? That's going to tell you your student's progress throughout the application and admissions process. Um, so you'll see this here. I have it here on a tablet. Because in reality, that's the access you have now. You can log into School Admin on a phone, a tablet, laptop at work, a computer at home, wherever it is you need to check on the process. You now have the ability to do that. And that's one of the, the pros of School Admin is giving you that access pretty much no matter where you are. You can check in um, on, on your student's progress. So this is an example of our checklist here at Bonner and Prendy. We have three things that we require on our checklist. Again, it's going to vary at other schools. Um, but the three things we require are the application form itself, which is the first thing you do when you make your school admin account. So pretty much you knock that one right out of the park once you do it. Uh, the applicant photo, which is just uploading a picture of the applicant, which helps for us because we really would like to get to know the students. So I want to get to know who they are so that when they come in for a visit, I can see uh, Romaine and say, hey, Romaine, how are you? And I can make that connection. That's important to us. And then the actual request for records, so the uploading of the students' records. So these are the th oh, there's the applicant photo. There you go. So these are the three steps you're going to complete in your admissions checklist. So these are the three things you need to do. Uh, there are times where people don't upload the applicant photo. That's clearly the thing that I need the least. I need an application. I, of course, need records to know what classes have been taken, how we're doing academically. And if no photo's been uploaded, sometimes we just give you the Bonner Prenny logo and push you through because we want you to be. But we really prefer that you submit a photo of the student as well, especially if a scholarship opportunity comes up and we want to put you up on the wall in the hallway or put you in a display. We can pull it right from there with parent permission. So once that's done, I've got three checks now. I've got three little check marks, and they go. And that progress bar that I saw uh, a slide earlier would fill up for me. And I'd be able to log in as Peter Parker, the parent, look at the profile and see that my green progress bar is completely full. And that means I did my job as a parent. And now it's the, the turn of the admissions team to review the application and make a decision. So once you have that checklist completed, that is your, okay, I've done my work now. It's in the ball's in their court now. I'm throwing it to you, Mr. Walsh, and your team of all alums at Bonner and Prendy. What's next? You tell me. So I wanted to point out the six names of people who are already considered application complete. So that means people who before today actually already did all those steps. Now, again, like I said, no one has an eighth grade report card. So some of those people uploaded seventh grade report cards. But what I do have for our friends who did all the applications today is a free Rita's Water Ice coupon. So if you're one of these six names, make sure you find me or make sure you lie about being one of these people, and I'll give you a Rita's coupon on your way out the door. I only have six, so I only have six coupons. So you can't try that much. But shout out to these people right here. So in terms of the records that we need, right, because obviously seventh or eighth grade just started, so we don't have a report card. So seventh grade final report card is great because that's the most recent thing that we have done. Uh, so that'll be the most recent final progress report of your student. So of course we want the seventh grade final report card. Um, all eighth grade report cards anytime they come in. So at any point when you receive them throughout the year, send us your eighth grade progress reports. Uh, when you get that first one, uh, a quarter in or a semester in, whatever the schedule of your student's school year is, send it to us. And we, will, we can upload it to the profile. You can upload it to the profile. We both have the same access, so we can upload it ourselves. If your school keeps an attendance or discipline report uh, or records, that's required as well. Other things we will accept, standardized testing, which has sort of been in flux over the past year and a half with COVID. Uh, we've had some schools opt to not offer it, some made it optional, some did offer it, but no one's really had the same situation. So any standardized testing results are optional right now until we sort of wait for everyone to get back on the same page. Uh, teacher recommendations are not required, but it doesn't hurt to have one in advance because when that scholarship opportunity comes up and the foundation says we would like two letters of recommendation, it's nice for you to say, oh, thank goodness we already have that one on file from her English teacher. We already got the coach to write that letter. We have it. So there's no harm in getting the recommendation letter um, at any point from a coach, past teacher, um, or, or another adult of the like. And then a student profile, which is something new we added, which is more of a mini resume of the student um, that shows us what you've been involved with, a couple of achievements or highlights you'd like to share about us. And we did this during the pandemic when uh, people weren't able to get to their school to access records, but parents wanted to give us a glimpse of their students. So we do accept these student profiles as well. And again, they help in the case of scholarships as well to have that on file and say, I can share 
a student profile with someone considering you for an award uh, or so on. This graphic that I have here is our record release form, which is also, again, on our website under admissions. This is what you bring to your student's current school to say, I'm giving you permission to release the records to the school we're applying to. A lot of families send it to us, and that, that's understandable. It's a fair mistake to make, but the families submit it to the school. We can always mail it to the school, uh, but you're going to, if easier if you get it there first. So the record release form is your way of saying, yes, you have my permission, release this to Bonner and Prendy. You hand it off to the secretary or the front office, scan it into them, and they take care of the rest. Uh, and then I'll just say in terms of the, uh, what we need to accept a student, uh, really an 85 average overall um, as a minimum is a great place to start a school year. If we see uh, something beneath that, we may choose to hold off on accepting for a month until we can see an improvement or a requested improvement. Um, so, but really what we'd like to see is sort of that average of somewhere around 85 to at least start the year when we're reviewing our priority and first applications. The other thing you'll see when once you're in school admin, and this all populates itself, is the optional checklist. You're not required to go to an open house. You're not required to take a scholarship exam. You're not required to tell me whether or not the grandparents attended the school. Uh, this is all a mixture of things that you can choose to do. They're considered the optional steps, but it's also a checklist. So as you do things, it will check off, but it does not impact your green progress bar in any way because all these steps are optional when you schedule your Tuesday walk and tour. And any time from your optional step list, you do schedule a visit. It takes you to a calendar within school admin. And when you see one of these blue bars on a date, that means the event or opportunity to visit is that day at that time. Uh, so linked right into your checklist is your actual admissions checklist, the optional checklist, and the ability to make your appointments for your visits right there. Um, so from RM, school admin's great. It really helps us centralize everything and keep everything together, uh, make it simple for you to make your appointments, keep everybody in one system. <clears throat> we have access to, as you can see here, where the postcard went, we have access to households. So if a student's going between two households, living between two households, that can be put, we can change who's the primary house and who isn't. Um, if you move, we can change that at any point in your application process. We can change the people that live in the house. So if someone moves in, a parent moves out, a living situation changes, we can update that so that where you'd like the mail to go or the emails to go, um, it's exactly as you hope. So we can make these changes. You can make the changes. So school admin's friendly and, friendly and letting you customize your profile in that sense. Again, I talked about this, resetting passwords, getting authentication codes, that's from our end. So if you're locked out, don't remember how to log in, need the link, reach out to us and we will take care of getting you the information you need. Now from School Admin, I have the opportunity to contact you a, a couple different ways. I can email you straight through here. Um, you know, in a lot of cases, I just take your email and send it through my Gmail, but I can send messages from School Admin. Any one of us from the admissions team can. Uh, we can also send text messages as well. So if you choose to opt for the text messages, um, we're not going to bombard your phone. We have no interest in doing that. Uh, I'm not looking to deal with your car's extended auto warranty in any way. If I text you, it's going to be for one of three reasons. Either you're missing one thing, and we just want to make sure you know that you owe us that one piece of the checklist. Uh, there's been a massive change or update to an event. So two weeks ago, we had to move our freshman orientation because it was the Wednesday night that Hurricane Ida was hitting our area. And we have families from all over Delco and Philadelphia County, and it just wasn't worth risking. So we had decided that morning that we were going to push it back a week, um, and we had to get that out quickly. And having those families opt in for texts um, was nice as well. So really, if I'm going to text you, like I said, it's either going to be about one thing that's being missed, and it'll just be a generic message saying, hey, don't forget to upload this, uh, a change in something, or if something really exciting happened at the Eagles game. That's really the only time I'll be reaching out to you. And I'm kidding about the third one, obviously. The information that you give us through school admin is how we communicate with you from that moment on. Um, we have a newsletter that starts in February that goes every two weeks until the start of the school year. And that's where we tell you about summer reading, class choices, placement. It's all the important stuff after the already important stuff. It's everything from when you register on. And we use the information you give us to share this, the address you apply with, the email you use when you apply. So use the email when you're applying that you want to be your go-to email for buying or printing information, one that you'll see frequently, one where you can read newsletters and get those uh, bits of information because that's where we're going to start sending our chatter newsletter and all their updates leading in. So it's important that you're applying with the information you know you're going to want to use uh, for communicating leading into freshman year. And then pretty much the last thing I'll say about school admin, and then Mrs. Dolan's going to talk you through facts. 
um, is that once you've applied, once you've completed the admissions portion, and you decide, okay, I did my three steps. I received my acceptance letter. I received a financial aid offer. My student chooses Bonner and Prendy. Let's do this. We pay the $100 registration fee, and we're in. A new checklist appears, and that's going to be the theme of life. There's always going to be the next checklist. Uh, but you move from the admissions checklist to the enrollment checklist. And it'll be my job in our newsletter to make sure you're aware of the new checklist and filling it in. But there, it's crucial that you continue with that next checklist because this checklist is what allows you to move from power, or I'm sorry, school admin into another system called Power School, where we do our class scheduling and our rostering. We literally cannot move you over from school admin into power school until you do the enrollment checklist okay so the best way i can visualize this i was trying to come up with something so i wanted this iconic picture from the wizard of oz dorothy and her friends getting ready to go to the emerald city school admin is our yellow brick road to high school that that is how you're going to get there but where we are going is into power school and i thought it was pretty unique that the power school logo kind of matched the actual facade of, of Oz. But that's pretty much how this works. We need to get your information you provided us into PowerSchool so that academics can make your roster, so that student services can send your address to your school district and get your transportation settled, so that the nurse has the <clears throat> immunization information that's required in order for you to attend your first day of school. So that's what we need. So once you move into that new enrollment portion, you've registered, you're in, you'll have that new checklist. Just know that that second checklist has an importance and it's getting you into the next database that you need to be into in order to be ready for school to start. <clears throat> Last thing I will leave you, left, uh, leave you with in terms of school admin is what I call the magic folder. Um, and it's a pretty standard practice for all things, but pretty much I just advise you to get a folder ready and collect everything you begin to receive. Every grade, progress report, note from a teacher, recommendation letter, keep a letter for yourself just or a copy for yourself. Have it all there ready for you because anytime you need it, you know where it is and you can utilize it. So it's important to have that information um, ready pretty much at any point. There is no such thing as too much documents you can give me. Someone mailed me their kindergarten perfect attendance award. They were like, do you need this? The answer is clearly no, but you know what? I'll take it. I'd rather have kindergarten's attendance report than nothing. But the more you can get us, the better. You may think sixth grade excellence in science won't matter for high school until I find out that our, sky, our science department is supporting that scholarship for two incoming eighth graders who have an interest in science. That might come in handy then. So truly, submit anything you can. I, I don't care. Give me all the documents you want to for your students' academics, and we have them on file. There's no harm in having them. And it always eliminates that step of asking for it if by chance we need any specific document about their academics. So always have, you know, share whatever you think might come in handy or could come in handy. Uh, I will field questions at the end of this as well. Um, this is advertised to end at 730. I think we should be on pace to, to go through that. The facts component isn't too much. Um, school admin's a little more of the heavy lifting of what we want to walk parents through. Um, but I'm going to have Mrs. Dolan now talk about financial aid, uh, and then we'll go over our fall events at the end, and then if you have questions, you're welcome to stick around uh, and ask those as well. So Mrs. Dolan, I'm going to ask you uh, to join us by unmuting. I'm going to give you the uh, give you the floor here. All right, and I'll move the slides for you. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect. Okay, so I'm all ready. You're good. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go through um, several slides in regards to the fax application. And the fax application is the application that, like Mr. Walsh had said, we ask all of the families to complete whether or not you think that you qualify for financial assistance or not. Um, we do ask all the families to do that. It is a lot of information. Um, over the next couple of slides, please know, and I'll say this a couple of times, just know that we, the admissions team, is here to help you. Um, we're not expecting you to um, retain everything that we share about the fax application tonight. So if you have questions about it, please feel free to contact our office. If you need assistance in completing a fax application, please don't hesitate to contact our office. And as always, most of the questions that you have, 98% of them, are all on our website under the admissions tab. So I'll start with um, our tuition, 
our tuition and fees, and then we will move on into um, the fax application. So as you can see on this slide, our tuition um, is $8,350 and our school fee, which we have not increased since last year, is $1,550. So total tuition for this current school year is $9,900. And that is to be paid over 11 months. So I don't know about you, but my mom always used to tell me, don't pay full price if you don't have to. So hopefully the next uh, couple of minutes will help you in uh, the steps that you need to complete your fax application so that hopefully if all goes well, you won't be paying $9,900 for tuition. So once you do set up your tuition, there is a tuition payment plan that you can sign up for, and that will be uh, sent to you. Uh, we will build a tuition program for you um, through our tuition officer, and you can pay four different ways. You can pay in full, you can pay by semester, you can pay quarterly, or you can pay monthly, which is the most popular way for our families to pay. Tuition payments are June, which is your first payment, through April. As Mr. Walsh had said, our advancement team works really, really hard throughout the entire year. They go above and beyond to secure assistance for our families. They've raised over $2 million for our current students, which has been amazing for them because it's allowed us to award a lot of our students financial assistance. We receive on average 724 fax application. So out of our 850 students, we're getting on average 724 applications for fax and financial aid every year. 75% um, of our students do receive some sort of financial assistance, which again is part of the Bonner and Prendy plan in helping families afford Catholic education. The link to fax, again, everything is under the admissions tab on our website. So if you go under admissions and you can go scroll down to affording Bonner and Prendy and right there, it'll bring you to the link where you will start a fax application. I'll say this a couple of times, the fax application for the 2022-2023, which is your student's freshman year, opens October 1st. I don't know if you want to get your phone out right now and put that in your calendar, but the application opens October 1st and it closes at the end of September of next year. So you have a whole year to complete your fax application. Again, any questions you might have are on the Bonner and Prendy website under the admissions tab. Okay, financial aid applications. They open October 1st. So you wanna make sure that you complete your financial aid application through the fax program. And again, it can be found on the website. There's a couple of things, you know, you do need to do a little bit of homework beforehand in regards to, you know, making sure that you have the number of living, the number of adults living in your household, as well as children, how many adults are contributing to tuition, your financial obligations, you're gonna need your 2020 tax documents, or if you do not file a tax return, you'll just need to have proof of that. Some people just receive social security. So there is a statement through social security that you would just need to submit. And to complete a fax application, a lot of times families go all the way through the fax application and they forget to pay the $30 fee. You have to pay the $30 application fee in order for your application to be submitted. And then the fax program will process all of your paperwork. And then once your fax application is completed. So paying the $30 is not completing your fax application. You're just paying for it and submitting it. Once all the required documentation has been uploaded, 
then it will be completed. When you first go into the fax application link off of the website, there are two options. One is for a registration code. We do not have a registration code for Bonner and Prendy. So you need to search by an institution. And the way that you search by an institution is by clicking and entering in our zip code, not your home zip code, even though your home zip code might be the same as ours, but you need to enter in Bonner and Prendy zip code, which is 19026. And then Bonner and Prendergast High School is the school that you will select. Now you're getting started. You're getting ready to create a username and a password. Please, please, please make note somewhere on an index card or a sticky note or whatever it is that you, you know, if you have a notebook that you keep all of your logins, because we will not have access to that. So when you create your username and your password, that's your username and your password. We do not have access to that. So make sure that you do keep a note as well as the security questions. So as you can see here on this slide at the bottom, there are security questions. So if you do need to call into fax, they may ask you for the pin that you have secured, or they may ask you for one of your security questions. What's your mother's maiden name? What city were you born in? Who's your favorite uncle? Things like that. Again, make sure that in your notebook of um, usernames, passwords, logins, et cetera, that you keep your fax information um, in a secure place in case you need to reference it. So here is where you're going to get started. After you create your username and your passwords, you will then start your application by clicking on under the fax grant and aid, you will start application. Again, this is where you're going to be, you know, you're going to need to upload your tax information, your W-2s, your tax return, including your schedules, et cetera. Next is your application form. I know that Mr. Walsh had said everything is a checklist. Well, here we go again with another checklist. So on the far left-hand side of the screen is a checklist of 12 different items or tasks that need to be completed when completing a fax application. So you'll start your application. Um, if you're looking at multiple schools, I know that Mr. Walsh had mentioned this, you can add multiple schools on your fax application. But again, just make sure that you have Bonner and Prendergast High School as one of your schools if you're interested in being considered for financial assistance from Bonner and Prendy. So financial aid, when it is completed, this is really important to understand, when it's completed, the fax system generates a family's calculated need. And then we, Bonner and Prendy, use the calculated need that fax generates in determining financial assistance and determining what our financial aid offer will be for your family. So no offer for financial assistance comes from fax. It only comes from Bonner and Prendy's tuition assistance funds. What are some of the things that make you qualify for financial assistance? Total household income, number of students that you're paying tuition for. So make sure that if your student has younger siblings in one of our archdiocesan schools, make sure that you include those on your fax application. And then it is very important for you to include your public school district on your fax application. One thing to remember is that if you're if you live in Philadelphia and your student attends, say, St. Andrews in Drexel Hill, your public school system is not Upper Darby, even though your student goes to school at St. Andrews, which is in Upper Darby. Your public school district is where you live. So if you're in Philadelphia, you would be in the Philadelphia public school system. Also on the application, which is very, very um, important to know, 
at the very end, there is an opportunity for you to make a special note, special circumstances, um, share a little bit about your financial, um, your family's financial challenges, your, fi your family's financial changes, things like that, unemployment, um, disabilities, things like that. So there is an opportunity for you to mention on your application if you expect a decrease in your income. And then also if you wanna share something about maybe a de why you're having a decrease in your income. That's important information for us at Bonner and Prendy to know so that when we are making the consideration, we can review that and then also include that when we are making our decision. Two things, and this is why it's so great that you guys are here tonight. Again, the application opens October 1st. If you complete your application, not just by submitting your payment, but completing the application, uploading all of the documents that you need by December 15th, and if your student's application is complete, you've uploaded their most recent eighth grade report card. We will then determine our, um, if we will make our decision for acceptance, and we will also include, if, you're, um, if you qualify, we will include your financial aid offer in a package by December. So if your student's application there um, is completed, their most recent eighth grade report card is uploaded, and we can review it for acceptance. If your fax application is completed, both by December 15th, we will be sending your student their acceptance package by Christmas. Merry Christmas, be a great gift. If by chance you're not ready to do all of that by December 15th, if you have your fax application completed by December 31st, then you will become a priority family and you will receive your acceptance and your financial assistance award by the middle to the end of January. So the sooner that you get all this information in, the sooner your student will know that they are accepted to Bonner and Prendy, and that will just make it a lot easier for them in making their decision. So again, October 1st is when the application opens. If you have it completed by December 15th, you'll have a great Christmas gift for your student. If not, then by December 31st, we will then send your information and your package by the middle to the end of January because you will then be a priority family. Being a priority family, I always like to share um, when I speak to this slide, especially in January, as you can imagine, the financial assistance bucket, the $2 million is sitting there. It's ready for us to start awarding to our different families. Come July and August, that's not the case. Our bucket then decreases from like a large bucket to something similar to like a beach bucket. So it's important that you get all of your information into us Start the application October 1st, get everything done by December 31st, become a priority family. Once you receive your package from Bonner and Prendy, whether it's by Christmas or whether it's the middle of uh, January, the end of January, in your package, you will receive a um, letter, a financial assistance letter. And you want to make sure that you return that offer letter to Bonner and Prendy. To the far left of your screen is a sample copy of what your financial assistance letter will look like. You will need to sign that letter as you accepting the award. Once we receive that letter, we can then move forward with having your award posted to your tuition account. So this is really important because we've had several families who receive their award letter. They don't return the signed copy they get their first tuition bill and their award is not posted to it. And it's total sticker shock because they weren't expecting their tuition to be that, that high. So just a reminder that when you do receive your financial assistance award letter, you do need to return a, a signed copy to us so that we can post your award to your tuition account 
which will then adjust your tuition payments um, for the school year. And one thing I'll say, just because of a typo up there, so it should say May 1st, 2022. Yep. There are going to be schools who will offer you an award of financial aid, and they're going to say, you must register by December 10th in order to receive this award or you forfeit it. We don't work that way. If we offer you, your student, a scholarship or financial aid award, it is held for your student until May 1st. So if, if you're caught in the game and someone's offering this, someone's offering you that, our offer is our offer, and it's there for you until May 1st. We don't do deadlines. It's suggested, and it's May for your own sake because by then, that's when all the new information comes out. So we want you settled by May, which is why we say you have it until May. So in addition to financial aid, there are academic scholarships available to those who sit for our scholarship exam. We are offering the scholarship exam in person on Sunday, October 17th, and Tuesday, November 9th. So you wanna get those dates in your calendar as well. We offer the St. Catherine Drexel and the St. Augustine scholarships. They are awarded to the top percentage of performers on our scholarship exam. And then we also do award believer and achiever uh, scholarships, and they are awarded to students who, uh, who perform close to the top of the, um, the scholarship exam. So in addition to financial assistance, there are academic scholarships available as well. St. Augustine and St. Catherine academic scholarships are available by sitting for our exam, as well as additional scholarships that we are so fortunate to have so many of our alumni um, and different organizations that have put together scholarships for Bonner and Prendy students. So there are external scholarships, there are internal scholarships. Some require an application, some require an essay, some require a letter of, of recommendation. Some have opening uh, dates of say March 1st with a closing date of April 15th. All of our scholarships are listed on our website under the admissions tab. And from there, you will get all of the um, requirements for that said scholarship. So in addition to financial aid, in addition to our academic scholarships, for those that sit for our scholarship exam, there are also internal and external scholarships available for our, all of our students. And again, all of this is on our website for all of you. So before I turn it back over to Mr. Walsh, I remind you, October 1st is the opening date for facts. Our admissions team is here to help you. We can walk you through the facts process. We can answer any questions that you have. A lot of your questions can be answered on our website under the admissions tab. And I say it again, why pay full price for something if you don't have to? So please take the time to fill out your facts application whether you think that you would qualify for financial assistance or not. And we look forward to reviewing your applications and getting those letters of acceptance and awards out by the end of the year. Great, thank you so much, Mrs. Dolan. Uh, this You're next section is just our upcoming dates. It's not gonna be long. We wanna get you out of here and honor your time. Let me go through this very quickly. And then any questions we have virtually um, or in person, I'm happy to field. But once I finish this section, you're more than welcome uh, to begin making your way out. So, uh, here are our upcoming fall events. These are now on our website. Uh, we have two open houses. Uh, again, just like this event, you can watch it virtually and participate, or you can join us in person. And two scholarship test dates as well. As you see, one of them is the same. Uh, that should actually say... So the test is earlier in that day, and then the open house follows that afternoon. So you see the two open house dates, two test dates, so two opportunities in October and November to uh, visit. Sign up through School Admin right through that portal. It's on our website. You do have to pre-register especially for the test because um, there is a testing fee through um, the company we use for testing. So those dates are coming up. Great chances to see more than us, see teachers, students, uh, the rest of our administration, uh, and make sure you visit them and get to know them as well. And again, like I said, the opportunity to sign up is all there on your checklist. 
Uh, Tuesday tours, we're starting these at the end of the month. We do Tuesday tours. We have two slots each Tuesday. Uh, they filled up rather quickly, and what we've done is we started just taking appointments. So if there's a Tuesday that works for you, um, and it's not at 10 or 10.30, but it could be at 11 or it could be at 1, uh, reach out to us. And, you know, we'll check our calendar, but, you know, most likely we can fit it in and get you uh, a tour that works for you. So if Tuesday, 10 and 10.30 doesn't work, reach out, see if there's anything else that can be done. Uh, I've come up on Saturdays before to give tours. We'll do it whenever it works with your schedule. We have parents who work different times, different shifts, and we want to make sure you get to see the building. Um, the the unknowns of, of what's left in terms of events. Um, visitation day that is scheduled for seventh graders was scheduled for this past March. It was moved to this October because of COVID. It was determined yesterday by the archdiocese that would not be held uh, due to ongoing pandemic concerns. So there is no eighth grade visitation day um, that is sanctioned by the archdiocese in any way. If a school is holding one, they chose to do it on their own accord. We will come up with, we are fun people. We will come up with fun events and we will ask you to join us for one of them. It may not be a traditional visitation day, but we will have uh, different things throughout the fall to keep your student engaged and interested and give them something fun to look forward to aside from the open houses and the tours. Um, same thing with shadows. We are waiting for the archdiocese to tell us whether or not we're allowed to have shadows and shadows are the biggest request because we can plan presentations, we can script an open house, we can't control what happens on a normal school day. Um, so when a student can come in for a shadow day and go through all eight periods with one of our freshmen and experience a full Bonner and Prenti day authentically, that's the best opportunity and best glimpse we can give a student. Um, but right now, you know, the Archdiocese is leaning towards keeping uh, the students within the building that, that are supposed to be here. Uh, we mm -hmm. don't want to overcrowd classrooms and force people into them just to offer these programs. So um, we're coming up with a couple alternatives that will still give your student the chance to come in during a school day and see at least half of a day or some classes. It may not be a full flood shadow day, um, but we're waiting on directives to tell us exactly how we can proceed. Um, so that's where we're caught right now with shadows and visitation day, which are my two favorite things that we do. Um, so we're trying our best to navigate around that and safely give you alternatives for your student to visit uh, and see the school in a way that's going to help them identify um, their best high school um, option. So those are the three things we highlight today. And again, we hit it fast. We cram it into an hour. Again, this will be emailed out. We don't disappear after today. We're available via phone, via email. Stop by, visit. Um, we're a presence you can always find and talk to. Um, so as you have questions throughout, please ask them. We're happy to answer. Uh, our job is to help you find the school for your student. We believe it's this building. We hope you discover that it is as well. Um, because before you know it, it will be time for Spider-Man, who started as a little application in school admin, uh, to run off to graduation. So I was very lucky when I found the picture of Spider-Man going to graduation. I didn't know that was going to happen, so I, I, that, that panned out. But this day comes, and it happens quickly, but, but it happens. Um, so we want to get you to that moment, and we will. And we know the four years you'll spend building up to that moment um, will be very influential and have a great impact on your students' growth and development. So... I'm happy to now field any questions that are left. We actually, last thing, our orientation for this year's freshman class is still on YouTube. I don't know who else is going to tell you to do this. I want you to watch our orientation for our current freshman class. I just want you to hear the information that is being shared. I want you to get ahead of getting ahead. I want you to be so ahead that we have to come up with a new word for how ready you are. So there's no harm in going on our YouTube and checking out our new student orientation that we just had because you'll hear the great things we're sharing about our school to our students. You'll hear what we're telling people the week before high school. And you can actually say, can I picture myself in this building the week before high school going through this orientation and saying this is the school for me? So give that a look as well. I will field questions now, but I also will acknowledge that we're past the time we said this would go. So mm -hmm. if you're ready to go home uh, and do whatever you've got to do, please, we ex respect your time and please do so. I'm going to stick around for any questions we have here or on the chat. So if there's any in the chat or anyone on Zoom, you can send them into the chat. I'll open the chat up. I know a couple came through earlier, um, but Mrs. Dolan answered them like a rock star. Are there any questions for anyone in here? Yes. Great question. Uh, I'll repeat it for the virtual friends who um, did not hear it is, do we need to take the, the scholarship exam at Bonner and Prenti to be considered for a Bonner and Prenti scholarship? Three years ago, the answer was you had to take our test. It's changed. We accept the results from other schools now. I know, for example, the date of our Tuesday test is the same day as an O'Hara test. And I'm fine if everyone who takes a test at O'Hara sends it here and everyone who takes a test here sends it there. It's just how it works now, especially over the past year when testing was limited with COVID. So um, wherever you take it, you can send the results. We will share a date where it's required to be submitted by. 
Um, so if a school has a test after our date, we'll say we need it by then because we're going to make our list of, you know, the total results from the tests based on the grade levels we get back, and that's how we determine pretty much our percentage. But we will accept results from other schools. Yes, right here. Yes, so let me clarify that. The question was the difference between a scholarship test and a placement test. So the scholarship test is a test we offer for eighth grade students to see the level they're currently performing at to determine whether or not they would receive an academic scholarship for the knowledge they've already attained. A placement exam typically happens later in a year for us. Other schools will hold placement tests now and say you must take this test to get in. There's no test to get into Bonner and Prendy. If we choose to hold a placement exam, it would be in about May. And if you take our scholarship test, we don't make you take the placement exam. So I always tell everybody it's likely worth the gamble to take the scholarship test because if you qualify for scholarship, you get it. And if you don't, you at least won't have to take a placement exam in the spring unless your student would like to or you'd like your student to do so. Um, When you get that acceptance letter, there's no test you have to take to get into Bonner and Prendy. It's the application and the records, and once you get that acceptance, regardless of any test you take before or after you're in. Yep. Uh, the things that are unacceptable, we could probably fill in the blanks of different. It's really discipline, and if there's academic struggle, that does not mean you're not going to get in here, right? No, no one will always completely flourish in all subjects. Um, but that's where if there's a struggle in a subject, uh, we may open a dialogue with the student's parents. Uh, we may ask you to go back to the teacher of that subject and say, could this teacher attest that the student is trying and write a recommendation saying, yes, he has this in math right now, but he's meeting with me after school on Tuesdays and we're doing this. That would help us a lot. Um, in most cases, we can accept. In unique cases, we'll conditionally accept, meaning we're going to accept you now, but we want to see that final eighth grade report card that shows that grade that's been down, you got it up. Um, in the unique situations where we may need to not accept the student, we'll have a meeting before we do anything else. So mm -hmm. there's really no situation where we're just going to tell you, no, you can't come into Willy Wonka's factory today. We're always going to say, okay, you're accepted, you're accepted, but get us that report card, or let's meet, let's talk, let's make sure this is the right school for your student. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so sorry, I didn't repeat the last question, but this is just in terms of seventh grade grades with education, and I'm going to paraphrase for you, being what it was over the past year, having a different impact than everyone, um, how will seventh grade, if seventh grade was impacted in any way or um, grades weren't as good as they could be or normally are, how are we handling that? And I mean, the truth is education got flipped on its head and then flipped back and then flipped again and like suplex, like it was WrestleMania, like twice in the past year and a half. And really, we just have to be understanding of that. Um, and it's not just happened to students who are applying, it's happened to students who go here. Students who really relied on in-person education who were home for half of a year and were trying to balance it last year. So everyone's had a different reaction to it. And the reality is no one's on the same page. No one from the same school's on the same page. No one from different districts is on the same page. And everyone has a different situation. And we're being extremely empathetic to that. And that's why we pretty much sort of in response to how I shared your answer was, we're going to meet with the family if we, ha if we have a concern, because the root of our concern is not that the grades are bad, but we want to make sure we're going to support you when you're a student here. So if we see that, in, again, very, very rarely do we make the decision that we're going to decline a student unless there are severe discipline or attendance concerns paired with academic struggles. Um, but I don't want any piece of paper that I get of your student representing them, because they are more than a report card. They are... They are a student profile, right? You can create a profile and say, you know what? She did struggle during the pandemic, but she loves soccer. And when she's on the soccer field, her eyes light up, and that is all her. And she would love, she'd be a great addition to your program, a hardworking student. You know, we can, we can learn about more. I don't care so much about chemistry if they're a good person, right? If we can have chemistry in person. So we can figure it out. And again, it's very case by case. We review every application. It's myself and Mrs. Dolan are like that first tier, and if there's anything else that needs secondary review, that's when we bring in our academics team and say, look at, look at this with us. How do you think we should proceed? Um, and we have a lot of support systems here as well, students with individual uh, education uh, profiles that they follow and plans that they follow for any diagnosed learning differences or disabilities, support classes, extended periods we offer certain students. So that's when we look at that report card and say, okay, what's the right path? for this student then if, if they're still catching up or they still need 
that um, assistance from recovering from pandemic learning, where can we roster them that's going to help them best when they're here? And that's really the work we do over the next eight to nine months before it's time to move into summer. Yes. The, the question was a great question, which was, will fax carry over if we have a fax account for eighth grade into ninth grade? And you will have to create a new fax account for the high school. So it won't be whatever school you're at now, it won't carry over into that. It will once you're here. So you do your freshman year application, you're going to email halfway through freshman year saying, it's time to start your sophomore year application. And you'll use the same username and login all four years while you're here. But you'll have to create a new fax going from grade school into high school applications. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having an interest in getting ahead. It's a good thing to do. Uh, like I said, people apply to this week, and there's so little to do then, but there's so much time we have now to make this process good for you. So thank you for coming out. Thank you for listening to us ramble. This is recorded. This will be shared. We will keep in touch. Uh, I will be in your inbox of emails at least once a week. We'll talk often, and um, we look forward to helping your student find the right school for them. Thanks, everyone. Thank you again, everyone, for coming. Thank you.